of our great country. I want to thank you for being here for me and for being here today. Ladies and gentlemen, today's business is very straightforward. And I'm not able to change from my old tradition of not read these speeches. Maybe because when I was in primary school and later secondary school, my, those who taught us how to read may not have been our best teachers, but they also taught us how to cram. And sometimes we cram so much that we even cram what we don't know what it means. <laughs> I also think that sometimes the gap between what leaders say in formal gatherings such as this and what they do when they get to office can be explained by the gap that exists between the thoughts of the leader or the speaker and what the speechwriter think the speaker should say. And so I am going to try to speak to you, and I will allow the defenders of the right to know, the right to hear, the right to be formed, which represent the fourth, the only permanent uh, uh, fourth estate of the realm. They are the only one who don't have to bother about congresses, primaries, and new tenure. You are at the mercy of your, of your proprietors. Um, my task this afternoon is simply straightforward, to announce very formally my intention by the special grace of God to contest for the office of the national chairman of the governing party in Nigeria today, the All Progressive Congress. I thought it is important that I make this formal declaration of intention to contest, even though somehow this is just one of those what cannot be regarded as public secret. Somehow my candidature has been discussed in both the print and the electronic media, in beer parlors, in business houses, maybe the, with the exception of Bucky Halls, <laughs> where only people who are defined as high net worth individuals are discussed. But I guess in every gathering of men and women who are concerned about our democracy, somehow my possible candidature has become an issue for conversation. But this is because of the way this whole project has evolved. But let me say that this is not to suggest that I am a reluctant candidate. I am not. I'm going for it because I think I can add value. I think, as President Obama said a few months back, you don't seek changes because these are bad. You do so because anything and everything can just be better. And whoever and however we can make things better, I think it will be worth our while. It is on that basis that I offer myself to contest for the office of national chairman of our great party. But in proceeding, I want to start by appreciating the laudable efforts and all the struggles, time and materials, day and night, that was invested by the founding members or founding leaders of the All Progressive Congress. 
I choose deliberately not to use the word founding fathers as every other politician would want to say. Because in truth, women were also involved in that struggle. The reason I will use founding mothers is because, is because I am not so sure that all those who were involved were mothers already. <laughs> I think it's so far therefore to talk about the founding leaders of our great party. In particular, I think it is just right and fair that on this occasion, I acknowledge and I appreciate the solid foundation that was laid by the first interim chairman of this great party, a former governor of Oshu State, Chief B.C. Akande, <laughs> along with other interim members of the Central Working Committee who worked tirelessly to convey against all obstacles, including those deliberately placed on our way by the former governing party, the PDP, that did everything possible to make the historic merger impossible. I think as we write the history of political party and development in Nigeria, it is important that we we find sufficient space to acknowledge that for the first time in the history of our country, four and a half or so political parties came together to form one party and proceeded within months to contest elections at all levels, including the presidential election. And by the special grace of God, using the Nigeria people my great party, the All Progressive Congress, won the presidency, won 24 out of 36 states, and I believe we won a couple of hundred of House of Reps, Senators, and State Houses of Assembly. Let me also say that it is right on occasions such as this to appreciate the effort of the current sitting chairman, my own brother, my own elder, but also, incidentally, one of my predecessors, the first governor of Edo State, Chief John Odige Oyegu. I want to place on record my gratitude and my appreciation of the leadership he has provided. Whatever anybody wants to say, I believe he chaired the party to victory in the 2015 election. And history will record that in his favor, along with other laudable things he has done to keep our party afloat up to this moment. Have you acknowledged that we have a city chairman. Why am I seeking to contest for the same office? I am seeking to contest for the same office, again, based on the principle that in the 21st century, in the past, the conservative notion was, if it is not broken, you don't mend it. But in the digital world, Anything and everything can get better. Uh, for those of you who use electronic cameras such as this, I'm sure you will look at the camera of your colleague and you say, I have the latest edition. And this one had more features than the previous edition. But they are all good cameras. <laughs> So, 
So I am contesting. Just for the record, I am contesting not because I think there is a leadership failure. I am contesting because I think, as is expected in our constitution of our party and even of our country, democracies work better when, from time to time, new blood, new ideas, and new people hungry to make a difference are given the opportunity to build on the foundation that those currently in office have laid or are laid. As I'm sure we all know, our party was registered by the Independent National Electoral Commission on the 10th of July 2013. And we have moved on and made substantial progress since then. The All Progressive Congress, the word progressive was not chosen as a mere name. It was consciously chosen by the founding leaders and members of the party to have a party that is different from the other political parties, particularly the former, the immediate past ruling party, the PDP. We founded an all progressive, uh, the, the All Progressive Congress on the basis of social democracy, a party that is committed to the people, driven by its members and committed to providing a platform, not just for people to seek election, but to provide a style of government that is pro-people, pro-poor, and pro masses That is why it is progressive. It seeks to depart from the previous order to a new order. That is why our motto was cautiously adopted as change. However, having committed ourselves to building a, a progressive party, there are a couple of things I believe are fundamental that we must continue to pay attention to as members of the All Progressive Congress. The first is to try to revisit what seems simple, a simple question. Who is APC and what constitutes APC? In my view, APC is the association, the voluntary structured association of all of its members. It belongs to all those who are card-carrying members of the All Progressive Congress. And the basis, therefore, of contract between these members is the constitution of the All Progressive Congress that regulates the affairs and conduct of the party across the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. That constitution is, is the basis of the contract among the members. However, allow me to pause a second. My old chairman is here. So please join me to welcome the chairman 
of the governors elected on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, the one and only Governor Ruchas Willy Okorucha. My governor, my governor. My chairman, my chairman. I believe that for us to be able to speak to talk of a political party, that is founded on the principle of social democracy, that is intended to be driven, to be membership driven and membership based. The irreducible minimum requirement is that we must have a party membership register that is reliable, verifiable, and open, not only to members of the party, but to all those who wishes to reach members of the party. Given the extra provisions in the Constitution of the All Progressive Congress, which allows for direct primaries or indirect primaries or election of ward leaders, local government leaders, state uh, chapters, and eventually the national convention, we don't need to belabor the point that a credible membership registrar is indispensable. Again, I want to acknowledge that the interim leadership of the party did work hard to start the process of building a robust database that will enable us to have a credible membership register that's spread across the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Unfortunately, as some of us may remember, Precisely on the 22nd of November, 2014, the former President Goodluck Jonathan's administration, desperate to suppress and subvert opposition, orders his agent, order the guys of state security services that invaded the data center in Lagos and destroyed it. My task this afternoon in declaring my attention to Cortez is not to lament that abuse of power. Because as we can see, what God has ordained, no one born of a woman can undo. So they, they succeeded in destroying the membership base but they did not destroy the will of the leaders and members of the All Progressive Congress, not only to chase President Jonathan out of office, but to replace a government that was clueless, a government that was completely incapacitated, and one that was wallowing in sharing and privatizing the resources of our great country. And thanks to the will of the Nigeria people, in 2015, that government was swept out of office. I think the challenge of a new leadership of the All Progressive Congress is to rebuild a credible membership register and sustain the tradition of continuously and continually registering new members into the fold of the party and integrating them into the structures of the party. I also believe 
that to speak of a political party is to speak of a collective. As a member of APC, I am just as a, an individual. But when we, co when we convey a meeting and we debate issues on the platform of the party, then there is a party that is functioning. I believe it is in recognition of this fact that under Article 25 of the APC Constitution, it provides for regular meetings of organs of the party, including monthly meetings of those elected to the of those elected as members of the National Working Committee, regular meetings, at least quarterly, of the National Executive Council of the meeting, convening non-elective conventions every two years to debate policies and programs and indeed the activities of the party and of the government elected on the platform of the party. Politics is not just about electing, about election. It's about ensuring that those elected keep faith with the promise that we made as a party to the electorate. And I believe that we must create platform for party members to interrogate, and if that sounds too harsh, to interact with those they have elected on what they are doing with the mandate that they have been given. This will include creating a platform for the man or woman elected on the platform of our party to engage the party leadership and party cadre on what he is doing with the mandate. The same thing goes for governors. The same thing goes for local government chairmen. The same thing applies to those elected to the National Assembly, Senate, House of Rep, and Houses of Assembly, and even councillors elected at local government level. A political party must function like a public taxi that is bordered by those who wishes to travel. And once they get to destination, they pay off the driver if they are willing to pay, or they just this board and find their way. We have a duty as political party to remind those elected on our platform to keep faith with our party manifesto, the ideology that bind us together. <laughs> and encourage the culture and the tradition of healthy debate and even contestation in terms of policy choices and policy options. Awful times in this country and elsewhere, people speak to talk about party supremacy. It doesn't be a debate. I believe that the fact that we submit ourselves as members of a political party means that we have agreed, subject to our rules, to do business in a manner that can be predicted by every member of the party on the basis of the ideas that bind us together. But we cannot speak of party supremacy without party organs functioning. For the purpose of clarity, I wish to say that if it pleases, as I pray, God Almighty, using the leaders and members of our party to elect me as the chairman, as the next chairman of the All Progressive Congress, people must be able to distinguish my views, my personal opinion on issues as Adams, Aliu, Oshomole and the position of the All Progressive Congress, even as a chairman of the party. 
What makes organization dynamic and work is when people are summoned to a meeting with an agenda known in advance, enabling those attending the meeting to reflect on the issues for discussion at those meetings, and everybody hopefully coming with an open mind, not like Idi Amin said, empty mind. There's a difference between empty mind and open mind. Open mind ready to listen, to be persuaded, or to persuade others. So that when decisions are finally taken, we can proudly say that this is the decision of our party. This is the policy of our party. And everyone from the president of the country to the vice president, to the Senate president, if he's elected on the president of our party, to the speaker, to all members, to all governors, we would then find no difficulties in obeying those decisions because they are our collective decision. There will be a sense of ownership. It's a huge challenge to manage a democratic organization. If democracy, like I said to people when they talk about dividends of democracy, I say, it's a very popular phrase, but it's also a little bit um, good -do -me -good -do. problematic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to problematize. <laughs> because like I've had occasion to say, and I want you to take this seriously. When we as politicians talk about dividends of democracy, it is, we say so sometimes with such arrogance, as if even dictatorship can have dividends. Dictators can build bridges exactly the same way as Democrats can build bridges. Some of the, somebody reminded me that the third Midland Bridge was not built by politicians. But the issue that distinguish democratic governance from dictatorship is that in the affairs of men, to do the right thing is important. But who is involved in the decision as to what is right is even much more important. It is that sense of inclusiveness, that sense of participation, that adults don't want to be spoon-fed. They want to partake in producing the food that they will eat. That is what makes democracy superior to dictatorship. And therefore, if elected, I would like to be able to encourage every member of the party, all leaders of the party, to imbibe the spirit of debate, of contestation, on all the choices open to us. There's always more than one way to get things done. So that whatever is done, there is a sense of collective ownership. If we sustain this culture of debate, of inclusion, then the issue of party supremacy will not be open to contestation. Because the party means the will of the members. And nobody in the party can then see himself as being over and above the party. I also believe that to be able to subject a functioning democratic party to function or in a sustainable manner, we must have the courage to look at anyone eyeball to eyeball and insist that people comply with the rules of the game, including the courage to impose sanction on those who deviate from the norms and values that regulate, that represent what we mean when we proudly celebrate ourselves as members of a progressive, I emphasize progressive party. When I watch the electronic media and I read statements in the print media, sometimes it seems to me that some people are confused when they see or they appear to be disquiet within organs of the party. 
I think that no political party wants to have a graveyard silence. If men are truly free, the first evidence of that freedom is the right to disagree and the right to agree. Therefore, I hold the view that contestation is not dysfunctional. Debate does not necessarily lead to disharmony. Democrats must have the capacity to engage in healthy debate, healthy contestation like we do in the trade union movement. And when we finish, minority will have their say, majority will have their way, and all must abide by the decision arising from such a, rebate, so, for such a, a robust debate. It is my hope that working with leaders of the party and drawing from the wisdom of the members that the All Progressive Congress, if elected as chairman, we will try and rebrand it in a way that it is not shy to debate. It doesn't see questions as a matter to disrespect and I should be able to help to manage conflict within the party and conflict between the various arms of government elected on the platform of the party. For example, I believe it is the responsibility of the party to constantly remind those elected, now let me speak with some pride, as a member of the governing party, as our president preferred that we address ourselves, rather than ruling party. Even if I share away from it, the truth is there, that somehow we've had, we've had we do have, control of the executive elected on the platform of our party at the highest level, the president. And we're also fortunate that the leadership of the National Assembly are also of our party. But the founders and those who drafted and adopted the principle of presidential system of government, which is founded on the principle of separation of powers, recognize the need to have a legislature whose business is to make laws and an executive whose business is to execute. And the fact is amplified that between the two, there is separation of powers. Whereas the legislature has powers to make laws, it does not have powers to execute. And whereas the executive has power to execute, it does not have powers to appropriate or to make laws. And I think the whole idea is that when these two arms of government patriotically and constructively manage their affairs, bearing in mind that to be separate is not to be autonomous of one another. Our democracy will flourish better and better. I think it is the responsibility of the party leadership to persuade the leadership of the executive and the leadership of the legislature to exercise their respective powers, bearing in mind that there is only one government. When I was the governor of Edo State, I did have cause to say to my uh, brothers and sisters in the House of Assembly that although we are separate arms, but only separate arms of one government, and the government must have one focus, one agent, and it is when you cooperate and collaborate that we can celebrate democracy better. I think that the irreducible minimum responsibility 
of the leadership of a political party and of the whole Progressive Congress, if I'm privileged to become the chairman, will be to constantly help the executive and the legislature to find common grounds to work together. Let me say that I think with all sense of modesty that have been well prepared for this kind of role. So, um, I was employed as a factory hand under a management regime in which I was taught or I was compelled to sign company rules and regulations in which I was obliged almost um, under duress to say that I shall obey all the rules, even without knowing what those rules are. <laughs> I was compelled to sign my application as yours obedient servant. But once I signed and we organized, my first task was to question the entire concept of managerial management prerogative and to insist that whereas we recognize the authority of the employer, that authority can be exercised, bear in mind that it is being exercised over human beings who have not just constitutional right made by men, but inalienable right imposed by God. So the, 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 the skill to negotiate, the skill to persuade, the skill to make concession, the skill to do give and take, the skill to talk through a process that will lead to a win-win solution rather than a winner and a loser. Those are the tools I have deployed as a branch union leader, becoming the president of the Nigeria Labor Congress. Aluta. So I am not a stranger. I believe that the idea of the Constitution and the spirit behind it, it has been deliberately framed in such a way that no one we have his way, but all we can have our way if we negotiate, persuade, discuss, and have a sense of collectivity as we move on. There can be no permanent solution because the environment is dynamic and the issues are ever changing, our expectations are ever mounting. What is constant, therefore, is the will and the courage to stay at the middle and assist those who need help within the party and between the party to sort ourselves out. In conclusion, I want to assure our leaders, the leaders of the All Progressive Congress, our overall leader, who is also the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, and leaders of the National Assembly, all the governors elected on the platform of our party, all the state houses of assembly, and all party leaders, that I am clear as to what my task will be if elected. I want to be of help. I want to be of use to all those who need it, but I am not capable of being used. I believe that this needs to be verified because there is so much suspicion in our political space. People fight often for things they are not even quite sure what the details are. They are foiled and sustained by suspicion. The way to eliminate suspicion is to put on the table, what is on the table, what is under the table, keep it under the table until it come to the top of the table. I want to assure Nigerians that I believe with a new leadership of the All Progressive Congress and with our president who I believe is ever determined, no matter what anybody wants to say, I want to take that again, no matter what anybody wants to say, and there will be time to engage in all of those contestations as we approach 2019 
electioneering campaign, and those who wishes to contest on various party platforms comes into the open. We will know the players. We will know their coach. We will be able to engage. Until then, until then, so that I don't change the headlines, until then, there is only one thing I want to be able to say here and now. But the worst critic of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, the worst critic will agree that if nothing else, our president is not a thief. Yes. <laughs> president Mohammed Buhari is not a thief. That, for me, is the starting point. And we will challenge others. All the former, former, former. Whether there is anybody who, on the basis of verifiable evidence that we can see, that can be so described without fear of contradiction. That, for me, is a starting point as we move on to engage those who wish to engage us. I am confident that Nigeria are ready to make progress, and our party is ready to mend where we have made mistakes and re-energize and confront the problem that confront our country. And bear in mind, as Mandela said, the entire black world look up to us. We have what it takes to provide that leadership. The Africa will be proud of Nigeria, and we shall be a refresh point. Thank you, and God bless Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.